In these problems, we are finding the solutions to some trigonometric equations that involve some other functions other than just sine and cosine. In this case, we've got one with a secant and one with a cotangent. I think a good place to start is to remind ourselves what the secant is. And the secant is one over the cosine. You know, the opposite relation exists. The cosine is one over the secant. They're reciprocals of each other. Okay, and just as the cotangent uh, is a reciprocal, reciprocal of tangent, and tangent is sine over cosine, so the cotangent is the cosine over the sine. Okay, so now we've got both of these functions in terms of sine and cosine, which is good because those are the values we have in our unit circle. The x values are cosine, the y values are sine. The next step here is to go ahead and solve these equations. Uh, this first one, let's see, we're going to need to add 2 to both sides. When I say solve, I mean solve for the trigonometric part. So we're going to solve for secant of theta. So this first step gets us square root of 3 times the secant of theta equals a positive 2. And then we just divide by the square root of 3. And we get the secant of theta equals 2 over the square root of 3. Now this 2 over the square root of 3, that should look suspiciously familiar. It's not exactly what you see on the unit circle, but um, it's sort of uh, the reciprocal of what you might see. The square root of 3 over 2, you should be used to seeing at values like pi over 6. So what we can do now is take the reciprocal of both sides. The reciprocal of the secant, as we said before, is the cosine. So this is cosine of theta. And of course, the reciprocal of this fraction is just that fraction upside down. So this is square root of 3 over 2. So now we're looking for places where the cosine of theta is square root of 3 over 2. And that's pretty easy. We just look for these x values that have a positive square root of 3 over 2. And they're going to be at pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. All right. Let's try the cotangent. This one gets a little bit trickier, although the algebra is not too tough here. We would simply add the square root of 3 to both sides to get the cotangent of theta equals the square root of 3. And the cotangent is the cosine over the sine. So what we really want to find is spots on the unit circle where the cotangent equals, where the cosine divided by the sine is the square root of 3. How are we going to do that? Well, we should look for the values on the unit circle that have square root of 3 in them already. So here's one, because you're not going to end up with square root of 3 as an answer without starting with a square root of 3 in there. There's another. There's one. There's one. There's one. There's one. There's one. And that's the last one. So these eight values all involve the square root of 3 somewhere. Now, our answer here is positive. So the cosine divided by the sine is going to be positive. That means it either has to be a positive divided by a positive or a negative divided by a negative, which means, let's see, this one would work. They're both positive, so with this one. And these two, both negative, that would work. But the rest of these, one's negative, one's positive, so you couldn't get a positive answer. So those are out. All right, we've narrowed it down to four possible answers. Uh, let's actually try the division. So we put the cosine on top and the sine on the bottom for the cotangent. So let's try just pi over 6. So square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half. And to simplify this, I can multiply by 2 over 2. That means the 2's there will cancel, and we get square root of 3 over 1. Aha! So this is one of our answers. So it looks like we need the square root of 3 over 2 as the cosine, and the sine is 1 half. So the uh, one that works down here is the negative square root of 3 over 2 and negative 1 half, that's 7 pi over 6. So our answers then are pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. So that is a little bit of work with finding solutions for secant and cotangent functions.